Today on the DML News Podcast, people in the country and around the world have questions and they go to the guy who they want the answers from. That'd be me. So get ready. It's an Ask DML and it's all unfiltered. Dennis Michael Lynch gives you his word and he will never let you down. He will always fight for America. The only one who really puts his money where his mouth is is Dennis Michael Lynch. Hello, I'm Dennis Michael Lynch, and I thank you for joining me today. Across from me is my son, Denny, and his dog, Robin, who you will see soon. On the controls is my son, Ryan. And we have a series of questions that you have sent in via Facebook and via email. So let me say to you right away, if you have a question and you want us to read your question on air, all you have to do is send Denny an email. And it's Denny at TeamDML.com. That's Denny, D-E-N-N-Y, at TeamDML.com. And you could go to Facebook if you want. Follow my Facebook page there. Every Tuesday morning, I say, what do you want to ask me? And you get to post it there. Oh, no, every Wednesday morning I do it. Every Wednesday morning. Sorry. Every Wednesday morning I say, what do you want to ask me? And you give you a question on Facebook, and then we answer it on Thursday. Uh, also, just before we get into this, I want to say this really quick. We are so limited now. DMLCBD.com slash store. DMLCBD.com slash store. If you go there, you get Denny's book, The uh, Wild Adventures of Robin and Summer. And it is a fantastic book for both children and adults, especially if you're a dog lover. The lessons in there are just amazing. And uh, it was a great uh, book written by Denny, and the, the whole family kind of collaborated with him. It was fantastic. He signs the book. You could get it for just $10. Brand new, brand new book, $10. They were selling for $27 last year on Amazon. We're, we're a really hot seller. And we will give you a free bottle, a DML CBD face serum, courtesy of of the DML Foundation. We are selling this stuff, giving away prices because we're trying to empty our warehouse before the end of the year because we are going to be moving to a different facility soon. So with that being said, dmlcbd.com slash store. All right, Dennis, I think you're starting off with questions that you got in via email. Yes, uh, the first one comes from Kathleen Alessi, and she actually said she enjoyed the book and hopes I'll do another one, so maybe one day that'll happen. Mm -hmm. um, and she wants to thank you and the Lynch family for everything we've done, but her big question is, how is Ashley doing since her surgery? Uh, this October 30th is going to mark three months. She has an appointment at the Mayo Clinic on October uh, on October 28th as the three-month uh, visit. And right now, she seems to be doing really great. I'd say, I mean, you see her as much as I do. She's probably about 85 to 95% back. Surgery was a success, knock on wood. And hopefully uh, on the 28th, she gets great uh, information and great results. And then she can move back into her house and get out of mine. <laughs> I, could, I could stop buying every single thing that she needs. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, I love having her home. Thank you for that question, Kathleen. Go ahead. Uh, Todd Arrington, and he's got two. Mm -hmm. why is it the last month or so watching your podcast i'm having to watch commercials i hope you could put a stop to it on rumble because they're adding in commercials right in the middle of an important conversation uh i'll make this quick todd we don't control that it's rumble i've sent three messages to them i have not gotten back a single response uh we don't know why this is happening we try to embed the code that is supposed to be uh commercial free and they keep on inserting it in there we are trying unbelievably hard. It is the only player that we can use the, to where we could speak freely. Uh, so hopefully they fix it. And I ask you to just hang in there. I know it's so aggravating, pal. But there's, right now, there's nothing I could do about it. Um, we're, we're doing the best we can. Uh, Todd's second question is, also concerning me is the amount of Middle Eastern driver uh, men driving trucks they have no respect for the laws, and people talk about terror attacks in this country. I think it will be a, tr a tractor trailer because it serves as the perfect time bomb. Pay attention to the people who are driving these trucks. A lot of them are now Middle Eastern and can't read or understand English. I have been driving for 39 years, and it's the worst I have seen in a very long time. What are your thoughts on this? Todd, I'm a little biased when it comes to this, obviously, because I live 9-11. Uh, I... Loved it when Trump put in the travel ban. Uh, I don't think he went far enough. He didn't hit all the Muslim nations that show a severe hatred for the United States of America. 
Uh, I agree with you. I believe that we are vulnerable right now for terror attacks. I think we're allowing in too many people from too many countries at, 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 in like a fire hose sort of kind of way, whether it's coming in through the border unchecked and unvetted or whether it's coming in legally, which I'll also say unchecked and unvetted. And if you don't believe me, just go back and look at 9-11. All those people who carried out 9-11 had gotten into this country on falsifying their, their visa applications. So with that in mind, I mean, I've always worried about it being on the trains, on the Am Amtrak trains. I've worried about it being in trucks, like, like you just talked about. You get some guy who uh, understands and learns how to drive an 18-wheeler and has an entire uh, load filled with you know horrible materials hazardous materials uh the problem todd whether it's in a train or whether it's a plane or whether it is an automobile or truck is our government has allowed too many people and continues to allow too many people to come into this country unvetted and unchecked there's no reason why we need these people and um we continue to do it and i just hope that trump will put a stop to it sandra duffy what do you think about the assassination attempt in California? Do you think the guy that was arrested was really there to kill Trump? I, I, personally, my opinion is I think he was. Uh, he, I, I think this guy is calculated. Uh, he, I think he went to the GOP uh, RNC convention and filmed himself there purposely, took pictures of uh, himself with Newt Gingrich, was near uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, was near Don Jr. And I think he tried to position himself as being some sort of Republican. And I think it was a big, huge scheme in his head uh, to make it sound like it's uh, a Trump supporter wanted to take him out. The giveaway was, on one of his social media accounts, he used pronouns to... Uh, to name himself conservatives and Trump supporters don't use pronouns. Uh, so I think it was sort of a, uh, uh, I don't know what you would call that a uh, slip of the hand. Yeah. He yeah. was trying to do red herrings, which red is herrings. like yeah, give yeah. the idea of, yeah. yeah, it was sort of like, uh, you know, it's like a counter football play. I'm going to make you look this way and I'm going to go that way. Uh, so yeah, I do. And I, I say thank you to the sheriff's department there in California for doing their job. Pamela Holand. I was watching 60 Minutes last night, and they had the person in charge of elections in Pennsylvania. He said there cannot be any fraud created, and that everything is on the up and up. What do you think? I think that's a downright lie. A lie. How 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 can that how can that not be a lie? We do not have a system right now that protects us against fraud. That's just another government official trying to tell the people of the United States another fabrication. If you want to rip out the fraud in this country, take the voting machines offline, go back to paper ballots, make it so this way every ballot has to be counted twice. It's that important. We've got the time to do it. Stop with the mail-in voting. Stop with the early voting. Let's bring this all... You don't have to even make it one day. Let's make it two days. Let's make it two days. I mean, we, we just went through a crazy wild storm here in Florida. Had that happened on Election Day, I said this yesterday, we may not have been able to vote. But you know what? The next day we could have traveled somewhere and voted. So let's just get it down to a two-day voting system where everybody has to use a paper ballot. It's very clear who it is that you're electing. And that's that. You sign the bottom of your ballot. You got to show ID. Th those are the things that you should do if you really want to protect your country. Gladys Bedwell. DML, have you considered taking a trip back to the southern border? I don't think it's necessary at this point. You know, when I was doing the border movies, uh, nobody else was going down there. Uh, it was a very dangerous time down there. Cartels were running wild. Uh, the... Uh, government was lying, saying that nobody was coming through the border. And so it was original what I did. It was new, and it uh, opened up a lot of eyes. Uh, today, every single Tom, Dick, and Harry is going down there, especially with the advent of these high-powered uh, cell phones that now have you know two or three cameras built into them. I mean, you can make a whole movie on something like this. So I don't think there's a need for me to go down there. I'd just be showing you more of the same. Uh, my, my thing, 
one of the interests that I have that you and I talked about and I, Ryan talked about was if we did do another movie on immigration, that we would like to do a movie on what I never covered, which is the deportation system. How that actually works, or should I better say, doesn't work. Uh, that's something that maybe we'll consider uh, in the new year, depending on who wins the election. Terry Caruso. Why do I see so many more TV ads and commercials for Kamala than for Trump, especially on conservative networks like Newsmax? Even if I'm watching on YouTube, they're there. Is it because she has raised so much more money? First of all, Newsmax is not a conservative outlet. Newsmax is run by a guy who I believe uh, positions him and his network as a conservative, but does everything to prove that he's not. Um, Chris Ruddy uh, donated a million dollars to the Clinton Foundation. Who does that? What conservative does that? You know, especially conservative media outlet. So uh, then on top of that, remember, each one of these uh, networks has a vetting process to what kind of content goes on there. When I worked at Newsmax, for example, um, and this also proves the fact that it's not really conservative network, uh, I wanted to interview, and I was the number one show. I was sort of the uh, Tucker Carlson of, of, of Newsmax. I wanted to interview two people who wrote books about the Clintons. They were part of the Clinton circle. And I was told I couldn't interview them on air. Hmm, that's kind of strange. Why? So, you know, when you look at these ads, uh, somebody at Newsmax said, yeah, we'll take the money. Somebody at Fox News said, yeah, we'll take the money. I mean, we talked about that guy, Tom Steyer who ran for president back in 2020, uh, the billionaire. He was running anti-Trump ads. Fox News was taking the money for those ads. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Now, why we're seeing more Kamala ads than we are Trump ads, uh, I think it's because Kamala is using her money fully for advertisements, uh, where Trump has to use some of that money for his legal expenses, and I think that the Trump campaign has gone more on the side of we're going to go social media than we are traditional television. That's just a guess. I don't have the inside baseball on that one. Uh, Tina Krebs. Why, are, why, why can't Biden and Harris close the border now? We the people, which is over 70%, are asking for this to stop, and now they're flying them in. Why? Also, why not send the criminals back or lock them up? Criminals now know that nothing will happen to them. Who's this? This is Tina? Tina Krebs. Tina, the reason being is because you're using common sense. 70% uh, of the people in this country, according to your number, have common sense. Unfortunately, uh, you know, we talked about this yesterday's show. We talked about black communities, about how 10% of the community creates 90% of the crime. Well, in this particular case, you've got probably 1% of the United States creating... 90% of the problems. So 70% people like you and I are sitting out there and says, it makes no sense. Why are we have open borders? Why are you flying in people uh, through a parolee program? Why are we taking in more people and worrying more about illegal aliens and, and, and immigrants coming through than we are American citizens? It doesn't make any sense. It's like, uh, you know, if there was a storm and you had little children it's almost as if you leave your own children outside and then drive to the next town and take care of kids that you don't know. It just doesn't make sense. It goes against the grain. Uh, it goes against human nature. you got to take care of your own first, and then after you get your kids secured, if you have the resources to help others, go, go about it. But um, when you want to change the country fundamentally, like Barack Obama said he did, and when you are of the, uh, as far as I'm concerned, communist persuasion like this administration is, uh, you will do things that don't make sense. And unfortunately, right now, our country is doing nothing to stop this other than saying vote Trump. And so let's wait to see whether or not, no, no, let's see whether or not 70% of people show up to vote the right way on election day. This next one's from Kelly Beals, and it's in relation to Brett Baer's upcoming interview with Kamala Harris. Mm. Do you think Fox will ask the right questions? No. 
No. <laughs> All right. Kevin Vargas. Hey, DML. Glad you and the family didn't get a direct hit from the hurricane. Why do I never hear the below statement from any pro-life politician? I believe this statement uh, encompasses neutrality and fairness to all. So this statement you're going to read me is a statement that he wants people to say. Pro-life politicians. Yeah. Quote, I am pro-life, but firmly believe in freedom of choice. If you want an abortion and kill your baby, you have to live with that for the rest of your life, but don't make me pay for it. And then he writes, of course, there are medical exceptions that can and should be specifically spelled out in each state. The reason why you won't hear a pro-life person say that is because it's not the message of a pro-lifer. So pro-life advocates aren't pro-life because they don't want to pay for somebody else's abortion. It's about the fact that they want to save a, a child. Uh, it has nothing to do with money. So, you know, if, if it had something to do with money, that's a different argument. You know, a pro-life politician is going to say, I'm going to put my foot down and you should not be able to kill the unborn. That's why they won't say what it is that this gentleman is saying. Now, with that in mind, uh, to, his, to his question, or to, I should say to his credit, uh, I don't want to pay for somebody else's abortion. And I don't uh, believe that abortion is a good thing. However, I've been around this topic long enough in all my years. And this is one of those things where you just are not going to win by saying uh, you have to save a life. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen. In the same way that the left wants to take your guns and you're never going to compromise to give any of them over, uh, the same thing's going to happen with somebody who believes firmly in abortion, and that's the majority of the left and the entire media. I think one of the better approaches would be that we go about an education program to where a lot of these young women are afraid. They're afraid of their fathers finding out. They're afraid of their boyfriends finding out, their husbands finding out if they've had an affair, whatever the reason being. But there's a large majority that don't want to have the child because they don't have the money. And, you know, it is a very lucrative thing for somebody to be able to um, put a baby up for adoption. If, 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 if a girl became pregnant and then, you know, suddenly knew that she didn't want to have that pregnancy, what she could do is she could find help and assistance to where family would be paying for everything leading up to the birth of that child. And so not only would it be paid for, but then there would be compensation at the end. So I'm not suggesting that this is a business model to go get pregnant and start selling off your babies. But for the people who are concerned at that level from a financial level, not only is there a way for somebody else to pay for your child to be born, but... Maybe you can help yourself get out of the, uh, the pit that you're in uh, because you'll be compensated at the end. So, you know, nobody ever talks about that. I wish they did more. Mary Ann Ford, what can we do as American citizens to get our country back? How can we help? <laughs> you know, that's such a um, high-level statement. Get our country back. What do you mean back? Are we talking about getting it back from the Democrats? Are we talking about getting it back from China? Are we talking about getting it back from the cartel? I think the better question is, how can we get our country back on the right track? And we're on a wrong track. The belief system in this country has gone awry. We've stripped God out of everything. Um, we're allowing our children to sit home and play on their computers instead of playing out on the ball field. Uh, kids today are more uh, heavy and unhealthy than ever before. The education system at this point just generally sucks. Uh, even the SATs now, you know, my daughter Kelly, your sister is taking SATs. They've changed the concept and the, the parameters of the SAT to make it easier for people who can't do well on tests. What the hell is that? I mean, even doctors, I mean, we've done reports here about how medical schools now are just kind of like flying through. Can you imagine having a surgeon who's like, I think I know what to do. So we've got to get the country back on track. And the only way to do that is through tough love. It's the only way to do it. And, um, you know, Trump's the kind of guy who's going to impose tough love. 
Most people are going to reject, reject tough love. But once it happens, once it goes into play, things change around. You know, I, I'll end on this one. I remember, I remember, I end this question on this. I, I remember, uh, you know, when I was a kid, uh, I had a group of five buddies. And we did something really stupid at a party when we were in high school. And I'll spare the story. But the father of the, we were at a house and the father wasn't there. The girl had a party when her parents were out of town. The father came back and he was pissed off as he rightfully should based on what happened during that party. And the five of us are the ones who got pointed out. And he was a judge. And he sat down and he made all the families come, like my parents were supposed to come, and all the families come. And he said, I want to know that you're going to be punishing your child and they have to do community service. Okay, fine. Out of my five friends, one set of parents didn't come. They wouldn't come. They said, no, I'm not going. And that guy never had any punishment at all for anything he ever did. I was punished the longest out of everybody. But all my buddies were all punished except for my one, my one friend. All four of us who got punished, we all turned out to be really good people. We're in good marriages, uh, good children, good professions, do good for the community. The other guy became an absolute train wreck. So although people don't necessarily seek tough love, when they get it, later on, they'll actually see that it worked to their benefit. Mm -hmm. And I think that this country needs tough love in the same way my one buddy could have used it and maybe he'd still be alive today. Linda Reed, should Trump be sentenced on November 26th and the Democrats are going to find a way to keep him out of office because I believe he is going to win, is there anything he can do about it? I have read that the Supreme Court could step in. I'm not really sure what she's asking. Um, Meaning if, if he gets, so if he wins or he loses November 26th, then comes the sentencing. Isn't his sentencing on the 26th? Yeah. So, so, so if he wins and then he's sentenced. Okay. So, so let, let me play, uh, put this out both ways. If Trump wins the election and he is sentenced on November 26th, whether it's one day, one year, 10 years or a hundred years, the guy's not going to serve a single day because there's not a single court in the country with the exception of that idiot in New York that's going to allow the president of the United States to be incarcerated when he has to run the president, uh, when he has to run the United States. It's going to get tossed. It's no big deal. See you later. If he loses, that's where his life changes significantly because he has nobody to protect him in that case. You know, he's going to jail. So, when Trump is fighting for the country right now, he's also fighting for his freedom on a personal level. Debbie Klein, have you been approached by Trump to hold a cabinet position in his administration? You are just what he needs. You are both very similar with the no BS personalities. Uh, no, he hasn't reached out to me. I, I can't even get an interview. Um, I, it's not Trump who declined the interview. It's, it's one of his people I guess we're just not big enough for him. He's trying to go to people who have got, you know, 20 million listeners. I just don't hit that range. Uh, but no, he hasn't asked me. Uh, and if he did ask me, I would reject it, to be quite honest. Uh, you know, Trump has his ways and he's doing his thing. And uh, I, I'm, I'm going to do my thing. The only way I would say yes is if he asked me to be Department of Homeland Security. That I would jump all over. But anything, oh, you know what else I like? Press secretary. One of those two things, I would take those two things. But other than that, no, I wouldn't be interested. Ronnie Simpson, where can we find... Oh, and let me tell you why I wouldn't be interested. Because he's got it. And he's going to send, send, center himself, I think, with good people this time versus last time. And I would rather sit back and allow him to do his thing and, um, and, and, and be at home with my wife, my kids, and hopefully you guys give me grandkids at some point. Uh, Ronnie Simpson, where can we find your podcast? My goodness, Ronnie, you can find it if you want to listen to it every day. Just listen to it every day. You can download the DML News app from the Google Play Store, the Apple App Store. You can um, sign up for it on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify 
or on iHeart. Uh, and if you want to watch it uh, periodically, this one we give out free on Facebook all the time. But if you want to become a member of Team DML, you could do so for just thirty dollars from now to the election, and that's good for a year. And you can watch every program. Uh, Debbie Patricia, do you, do you have a plan to clean up the mainstream propaganda media? Can it even be done? Uh, boy, this all goes down in the election. If, if Trump wins this election, I think the mainstream media starts to face the beginning of the end. Elon Musk, I think if he is given the freedom to do what he needs to do, meaning that Kamala Harris and, uh, the likes of her aren't trying to put him in jail. I think he's going to convert X into Disneyland for media. You know what I mean? I mean, every single person who has a child says, oh, you got to take them to Disneyland. It's the one amusement park everybody goes to, right? So I, I think that the days of ABC, NBC, CBS are coming to a conclusion. I think that if you are not on X, uh, you will actually fizzle out. I mean, it's an interesting thing to explain. We have sort of lost our flavor for Facebook. We're using it simply because I have a million and a half people there. If Kamala Harris wins this election, the last thing I think I'm going to be doing is broadcasting all over social media because she's going to look to bring everybody down. But if Trump wins, we're going to start putting significant resources into X and to build ourselves over there and say goodbye to Facebook because we don't want to be censored. So if... Trump wins, I think the movement to X, where that will become the hub, uh, it will be the Grand Canyon, if you will, for media. That will be the plan, and these other guys will go away. If Kamala wins and they go after him, I don't know what happens, but um, maybe we go back to where we were a couple of years ago when everything was basically buried under the rug. It's going to be a very scary thing if she wins. Mary Ann Newman, how is this legal? New scum, aka Gavin Newsom, Ga Governor Newsom, Governor Go Newsom from California, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, signed into law, no ID required to vote in California, and thirteen states have followed. Is this not unconstitutional? I think it's so wrong. Well, it's even worse than that. There, there, there are states that are not allowing the uh, the illegal non citizens to be pulled from the voter rolls. And when uh, Governor Youngston in Virginia wanted to do that, the Department of Justice went after him. So clearly the left wants non-citizens on the voter rolls. And they understand that it's so hard to stop the cheating from happening. So yeah, it's, it's, it sounds unconstitutional. It sounds unlawful. It sounds anti-American. You're talking about the Democrats. They will cheat, steal, do whatever they've got to do in order to win. Colleen Julia, would you ever consider inviting your followers on some of your podcasts like a round table? Trump would love to know our thoughts too. I, I think it's a great idea. Uh, and I think that when this election is over uh, on our end here, we're going to be making some big choices about what we want to do. If Trump wins, uh, maybe we do something like that once a month. If Trump loses, maybe something we do all the time. You know, uh, so this way people feel like they have a voice or at least a group to talk to. I think that the I think what you're going to see if if Kamala Harris somehow wins this, I think you're going to see a lot of private groups pop up. I really do. It's, it's going to be. I, I think November seventh will be the most interesting day of our life. November 6th being the election, November 7th being the, the, the aftermath. I do not think this is going to go smoothly. Brian Maloney. DML, I was just listening to your podcast about early voting in Georgia. I think it's not the Dems coming out in droves. I think it's Republicans banking on their vote. I never voted early, but I will be doing so this year. What are your thoughts on that? I think he might have a point. I mean, historically, and what I was saying yesterday's show is historically, the Democrats are the ones who come out early. Um, and they still are going to come out early. But 
I think there has been a big push for Republicans to fight fire with fire. So maybe that's why it is. I also think that there is uh, a lot of promise to the fact that Governor Kemp and Trump have made amends. And I think that Kemp realizes the fact that the future of his political life depends on Georgia being a victory for Trump. So, uh, yeah, let's try to look at it as a positive thing, but let's not close our eyes to the fact that it could be the Democrats coming out in large numbers. Lee Ann Griffin, do you think Kamala Harris's plan to give money to black entrepreneurs will appeal to the majority of black people enough to vote for her? Or do you think the majority will really realize she's trying to buy votes and doesn't have theirs or anyone else's best interest at heart? I think any successful entrepreneur, whether they're black, white, Asian, Hispanic, polka dotted Martians, they recognize the fact that Kamala Harris would be detrimental to their business. Um, if they don't, then they're just really lucky people. So when she asked the question specifically about entrepreneurs, I don't think entrepreneurs that are smart and successful really will see her gimmick as being anything great. I think there are more people in the sidelines who will pretend to be an entrepreneur, get 20 grand, not have to pay it back, and then go out of business. <laughs> I think it's a scam waiting to happen. Veronica Langor Rimmel. I don't understand how these TV ads are allowed to have false information. I suppose money talks and the networks don't care about the content. If it is proven by fact check that the content is false, shouldn't it be pulled from TV? <sighs> well, yes, of course. Uh, but a lot of times these commercials are structured and positioned in such a way to where there is a bit of shade of gray. Um, you know, if there's a commercial that says, uh, Trump will sign a national abortion thing, you say, well, that's not true. And then they'll come up with something that says that Trump said this one sentence one time. And therefore, even though Trump has said a hundred times, he has no plan on doing something like that. It's the one time that he said something that was remotely close. And so it passes through. You have to understand that when you look at the major televisions uh, uh, networks that you're watching, you're talking about ABC, NBC, CBS, CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News. And if you want to throw Newsmax in there as being like, you know, the stepchild that is getting a, a seat at the end of the table, every single one of those outlets right there, as far as I'm concerned, is driven by the left. That's just the way it is. So what do you expect? Teresa Howard Condon, do you truly believe we actually elect the president and that they're not just put in place by the few who really run this world? I think the president has been always elected by the media, indirectly. Um, the president has been, even Trump, when Trump won in 2016, I've said this on the show many different times, the media thought that by highlighting Trump, they were going to make him look like a circus act. By highlighting him in 2016, they actually revealed what it is that he was all about, and people said they liked it. So I think the media has been, uh, uh, look, I faced this myself. Uh, when I was thinking about running for office, immediately I was tossed off Fox News. Why? Uh, because I know the GOP and certain Republicans didn't want me playing. So that's the power. They pull you off. So I, I think the media is the number one culprit uh, yeah, I do think there are very special interest uh, groups involved. I, 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 look, I'll give you an example. Everybody knows I like Elon Musk, and obviously Musk is going to be voting for Trump, and that's great. And he just gave $75 million to his PAC, which keeps on giving money to Trump. And although I appreciate Elon Musk doing that, at the same time as I wish he wasn't allowed to, I would like to strip all money out of these campaigns Every single person and every single entity should be able to give a one-time donation for the same dollar amount, no higher, meaning if you're going to cap it at $2,500, it's $2,500 whether you're Home Depot, Dennis Michael Lynch, or some guy who you know is barely rubbing two dimes together. You give what you can not to exceed $2,500. Until we do that, money and power and, and attention like in the media, is always going to buy an election. Becky Baroness Waite. 
What's your favorite funny story to tell people? <laughs> uh, has nothing to do with politics. It's a very, very funny story uh, if you just look at it on the, on the surface. Uh, in fact, I just told this story the other day. So we had this guy in high school. His name was Claude, and he was, he was a handsome kid, but he had absolutely no confidence in himself, zero confidence. And so he would never talk to girls. So the rest of my buddies, you know, we talked to girls. We had confidence, whatever. And I mean, Claude was a good-looking guy, and he was tall. He's probably about 6'2", built well. He's a soccer player. No reason why he should be shy. So we convinced him that he was making a mistake and that he should just try and that we would help him. We would be with him, um, talk to girls. And he's like, well, where should we go? And we said, why don't we go to the beach? So on a weekend, we went to this place called Jones Beach, it's filled with youngsters, you know, girls, guys all over the place. So we put our blankets down, and it was right next to a group of girls. And so we're encouraging Claude to try to talk to these girls. And so finally, one of us said something, whatever, and Claude sat up and, and, and was starting to talk to the girls, and his confidence was, was going. And so he kind of leaned back on his elbows and had his chest up to the, to the sun, and he was talking to the girls, and he was just getting in his whole. <laughs> he was getting into his, his whole rhythm, and as he did it, yeah. as he started getting into the rhythm, a pigeon flew over and took a crap, and it landed, splatted all over his chest. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not laugh with that? Poor Claude. <laughs> right? And, and, and it was just like, <laughs> and he lost all of his confidence. And it was, and the girls were laughing and he was devastated and he wound up picking his stuff up and he left. <laughs> it was, it, it, I, the, the, I, I've told that story 5 million times since I've been 17 years old and it never gets old. Love it. God. <laughs> All right. Well, the uh, the last question <laughs> comes from me. Uh, recently, Ryan and I just did the podcast when you were gone about Elon Musk's big event that he had over this past weekend, uh, the Tesla event for his Robo van and Robo taxi. Okay. But the big highlight was his Optimus robots, which he believes in the next few years can be fully autonomous, which means move and talk about just themselves. I know what autonomous means. <laughs> okay. Uh, and even have a price point of twenty to $30,000. So we ran a poll, and I got very interesting responses, and it might even influence what we do for our weekend show here. What does the poll ask? Would you own an Optimus robot if uh, it was available uh, today? What, what, what are you getting back as uh, responses? Well, in terms of the actual voting, majority say no. But... Based on some of the written responses, there are good arguments for and against. So I think some people are personally curious to see what your take would be. Would, right, you, so would you personally own one? First of all, the poll, if people want to get the poll, it's on the DML News app. You can download the DML News app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Also, if you want to sign up for the newsletter, we put the polls in there all the time. Is that the poll you had this morning in there? Because I didn't see the poll. Yesterday morning. That was yesterday morning? Yeah. Uh, so, and to get the poll, to, I mean, to get the poll, to get the newsletter, go to DennisMichaelLynch.com and just sign up. And I, I just want to add, too, I think, as I said, with our uh, weekend show, we actually might make the movie review on iRobot, which is what the event was inspired by, because I got a lot of requests, both email and on comment, about going to view that movie. That'd be so. cool. So the question you're asking me is, uh, and Ryan, your microphone on? Yeah, I'd be curious on yeah, put it, put it Ryan's right answer again. You yeah, did. No, 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 yeah. no, because no, no, I'm, I'm going to flip something. So the um, answer to your question is, I would buy two. <laughs> oh. I would buy two. Okay. I'd buy one robot to clean the inside of my house, and I'd buy another robot to do the outside of my house constantly because the money that I would spend, if they're 20 grand, if it's $40,000, the money I spend on having to have my lawn cut, my gutters done, my pool cleaned, the cars cleaned, you name it. And I'm not alone. Everybody's got this stuff, right? And then inside the house, come on, man. I know you guys love your mother, but you got you to gotta, you gotta defend me on this one. Your mother is a train wreck when it comes to keeping the house clean, doing the laundry, doing the dishes. We had people over the other night. And people came in and we had dishes in dirty dishes in the in, in the sink. And I'm like, son of a 
gun. So yeah, I would buy two robots. Agree, you have to sell your mother out right now. Your mother is a great mother, but what is she horrible at? Look. I, I knew it. You wouldn't hell? do it, Ryan. Ryan yeah. will back me. That's why I told him to put the friggin' microphone on. Go ahead, Denny, because Denny's the prodigal son. I'm not. No, look, she, she, their days are it's messier than others, but she knows how to get that house in order, too. But I think the bigger question is what happens she when... She know how to get the house in order. She, she hides things away. It, 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 she cleans up by hiding things away so this way people don't see it when she get there. Well, I think there will come a point where you, I mean, we have the benefit of you have me and Ryan down the block, Ashley as well. But I think for some people, and that's what I saw in some of the responses, if you're on the older side, right? If you're 70s and it's a little bit tougher to do the dishes or do the vacuuming or the cleaning, and you got uh, kids across the coast or even in a different country, this could be the solution that helps you out with those everyday chores. Do you see then, your brother? Then he could be a politician. He just Dude, deflected. Did you see him deflect? Yeah. He's such a kiss ass. <laughs> I'm not, I asked I, a question about your what? mother who's 55, and you gave me an answer about 70 year olds. Go ahead, Ryan. I'm not going to fully defend you, but what? Th I think mom, I mean, her cleaning has digressed. With I'll say age. this. I, okay? I would say that I've seen, right. I've seen, but I've seen what the house has looked like when dad's been alone there because mom's away on a lacrosse tournament. Yeah. But I've I mean, seen how that it's house clean because dad doesn't do anything. What are you talking about? He leaves his food. I mean, out. I remember he, the last time I seen dad clean a dish. Exactly. I don't think he knows how to run no the offense, dishwasher. But, but it, I mean that his job is to come here and, you know, I know do this. But so I paid for the dishes. I paid for the dishes and I paid for the stuff that goes on the dishes. Yes. I did my part. But what, what I'm saying is mom, like when we were younger, was very good with it. But I think she's just tired now. The reason yes. why mom was very good with it is because we lived at that point in a 1,100 square foot house. We have four times the house. She did good at right. it. But guess what? Now she's also decades older. So what I'm saying is, is that maybe a 40 year old mom would be like, I don't need a robot. I got my house in order. But you know, we, we all hit a point where it's harder for our bodies to, you know, function when you get older to that extent. So how do you how know? Do, You're 29. But I, I'm observant. I'm observant <laughs> with my older hurt. parents. So, you know, you have us right, perfect example. You just had me and Ryan help you. And Brendan, too, and Ashley, we all helped. It was all hands on deck for the hurricane that just came through. Brendan is Ashley's boyfriend. Now, imagine if uh, Ryan was in California or New York or Me Too, and Ashley and Brendan were off somewhere else, and you didn't have that. You would either have to call up some neighborhood kids, you would have to maybe hire someone, or if, as you just mentioned, you had your two Optimus robots, they'd do it for you. Yeah, that's why I said to buy two. You'd buy two. And I'd probably save money. But you wouldn't have any concerns about them not following their protocols. I worry about your mother not following the protocols. I tell you, I have to make your mother a list every single day, and she doesn't follow the list. When I was pulling out of the driveway today, I, before I called you to go over the show, I wrote to your mother a text message, call special pickup. Because at the front of my house, sitting at the street, is all the garbage that's there from when we had the, the, the hurricane to storm. I have to make the reminders all the time. There are the two messiest rooms in our house. Would you admit this, Ryan? I'm going after you here, Ryan. The two messiest rooms in our house is the kitchen and the laundry room. And the two rooms that your mother basically dominates is the kitchen and the laundry room. Yeah, and then underneath the bar area. I think that's the messiest. And that's your mother. Yeah. She's got papers. I mean, that is kind of the kitchen, but I think that's the dirtiest. Yeah. You know what? There's you, stuff everywhere. I, you know what we're going to do? Shoved into drawers. Your mother said to me, what are we going to talk about the wine and talk this week? I think we're going to talk about that. About having an Optimus robot? I mean, but then no, look, about, look. About, I'm going to go home right now and I'm going to film things in our house so people can see yeah, how and I'm then right. look at the garage, we make it though. seem like she doesn't do anything. I'm a, Sometimes I'll go over there. She's vacuuming. She's filling the dishwasher. She's doing endless laundry. So it's not that I'm like trying to like, you know, I'm, I'm the, being a advocate. Let's say I would say the, the garage is dad's domain. That thing is always a mess. Exactly. And it's not like your you office have is us, all straight up us, either. Wait you a have second. us go to the garage and we clean it up like every six months and it just turns into a it mess. It still turns. But yeah. why is the garage a mess? If I don't you go know. To I don't my, live there If anymore. you go to my part, my part's not a mess. If you go to the other parts where your sister and you guys get involved and your mother gets involved, that's where the mess is. And I'm going to prove it today. I'm going to film this stuff. And well, the garage it. is kind of nice because we had to put stuff in it. So it was way but worse. Messy yeah. parts of the garage are the parts that don't include me. 
And your office is pretty well, messy. Well, so you, but your your answer is <laughs> yes. You would own an Optimus robot because you realize True. That, that opens the can of worms of as we talked about the other day. You will see them in businesses. You'll see them in schools. They'll become part of society. So you you embrace that. Whereas some people, their answers were it's opening up a dangerous can of worms. Look when when. Uh, and then we have to well, that's this. a different question. Not to cut you off. It's, no, go. Would you? Your question was: Would you buy one and have it in your home? Yes, but what not I'm saying, like, yeah, you know, but it's not. I'm, yes, I'm posing a second question, but I'm not trying to alter the first. What I'm saying is, you're in support of having one in your household, which means that it's going to be something where it's in society, whether it's in other households, other businesses. There's some people who maybe want it in their household, but not widespread. But I don't know how you contain or mitigate that. Well, we have been shipping jobs off overseas, okay, for a very long time. So I don't necessarily believe that by me hiring a robot to clean the inside of my house because my wife won't do it, and as you say, as she gets older, she can't do it, I don't think that's going to have an impact on somebody else because I'm not going to hire a house cleaner. So there's not a job lost, you know, in, in that particular case. In other cases, there were going to be a lot of jobs lost. And as you said in your podcast uh, with Ryan, when I, when I wasn't here the other day, you said that there's an emotional standpoint gone, the human element, the teacher uh, element gone, the bartender element gone of that communication you get back and forth. I agree with that. The question was, would I have them in my home? And the answer to that is yes. Do I want to see society be, re be replaced by robots? I don't, scares the living hell out of me. So there would have to be certain rules and regulations on that. But we're going to lose that. We're going to lose that war. You're going to see that this country is going to be, by and large, robots. When you walk into McDonald's, you're going to be dealing with a robot, not with a human being. Your order is never going to get screwed up, which is good. And you know it's going to be made the way you want it to be, to be made. The issue is, are we going to be able to evolve as a country and as a people to where we could find other ways to where people can make a living if robots are taking over a lot of the laborious jobs. My answer to that is, I don't know the answer today, but I assume we'll figure it out. Everybody's always been concerned. You know, when the television came out, radio was going to die. Today, radio is still a very popular medium, not as big as it was, and that's not because of television, but because of podcasts. In fact, I'll give you the argument right here. Rush Limbaugh was huge prior to his death. And I had a flat screen smart TV on my wall. So it did not kill radio. What kill, what's hurting radio today is the podcast. So although people in radio may be losing jobs, they could go get them in the world of podcast. You two guys have a job because of podcast, right? So we have to evolve and figure things out as we go. A lot of times it's not right in front of your face, but it pops up. And, that, and, that's, and that's that. All right, good questions. Thanks, everybody, for sending them in. As always, thanks, Ryan, for participating and, and defending me a little bit against your mother. Dennis, I did not expect you to, to have my back on that one, and this is why your mother always buys you more gifts than anybody this else. It's so not true. Yeah, it Mike. is. It's so not true. It is true. It's, uh, Kelly's the one, rightfully so, but Kelly's the one. And she's Ryan, got the birthday Ryan, do you believe... Out. That Dennis is the favorite. What with mom? Yeah, yeah, yeah me really out of the four of us. <laughs> yeah, I don't think about this really, really hard. Absolutely, no. Ke mom just thinks Kelly. I don't know. Mom and Kelly, Kelly is still in super high school, mom. But with Ke Kel for someone if your Kelly's age, picked up two minutes late from school. It is Armageddon. I have been forgotten by mom at school before. If you mom want turned your birthday attack. into three days, yeah, that's not um, true. Come on, man. Okay, come you got, on. Now Enough. you're just doing it to Enough. slam on me. Kelly gets the attention because she's the only one in the house. Mom doesn't even answer my phone calls. <laughs> that's not true. That is not true. Come on. That All right. Until true. the next time, we may pick this conversation up on on tomorrow with the with the wine and talk. Um, maybe we will. Maybe we won't. We'll do a little bit of politics, but maybe we do half the show to this because we we need to solve. I want to know if she wants an Optimus robot. I think she would say no. I think she said, "I'll buy three. <laughs> really? I we'll don't see. Know. We'll see tomorrow. I, she gets complicated answers. We'll see tomorrow. She's coming in tomorrow. All right, until the next time, which hopefully, God willing, is tomorrow, stay well. Uh, God bless you, your family, the United States, and Donald J. Trump. And today's team email blessing is for Ellen McMillan. And uh, kind of like what I just said, for the weekend show, 
just to make it fun, we'll do iRobot. And then the following weekend, we will do a Brian's Cafe. So Wait, so like we're doing iRobot this weekend? I thought we were doing a cafe. No, no. So this weekend, we'll do iRobot movie review, just because we haven't done one in a few weeks. And then uh, okay. next weekend, we'll do Brian's Cafe. Maybe something Halloween related, since it'll be yeah. Halloween. Sounds good. Talk to you soon. Get the Dennis Michael Lynch podcast every day by subscribing on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and download the Dmail News app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store for breaking news, merchandise, films, exclusive content, and Team Dmail.